Hello and welcome to today's Pomerantz Mentor Series and the vignette is on the less common forms of impingement, especially ulno triquetral, and we'll touch on mid-carpal impingement. Today's vignette is sponsored by ProScan Education Foundation. We have in previous vignettes talked about variance and the proximal to distal projection of the ulna versus the radius, and the radius versus the ulna, especially the non-styloidal portions of these two bones. This slide demonstrates our friends Tom, Dick, and Harry. If the ulna is much shorter than the radius in its proximal to distal extent, then we refer to this as negative ulnar variance. These patients are prone to lunato necrosis, TFCC synovitis, and extensor carpial naris disease. If the ulna lies distal to the radius, then the patients are prone to ulno lunate abutment syndrome and degenerative triangular fibrocartilage tears. Here is an example of one of our less common types of impaction called ulno triquetral impaction. It can occur as a result of a fracture at the tip or at the base of the ulnar styloid. When the patient is in ulnar deviation, these two may crush or crunch together, producing a defect. However, be careful. This area of the triquetrum is normally undulated, and you should look for inflammation, cystic change, or an etched, marginated erosion as opposed to a gentle defect, which is commonly present in all. Another cause of ulnotriquetral impaction is dysplastic overgrowth or an accessory ossicle such as that seen here, which once again is pressed against the triquetrum, producing synovial thickening and in this case erosions of the distal ulnar styloid. This capsulitis and generalized swelling is very symptomatic. In patients with negative ulnar variants, sometimes the ulnar styloid is bizarre, long, fat, overgrown, dysplastic. Now, it may not seem problematic in this neutral position, but imagine if you're playing golf and you're trying to go from a pronation to supination or supination to pronation position, or you're going from radial to ulnar deviation. Then you're going to abut these two structures and create diffuse swelling distal to the ulnar styloid as is seen here. Another example of ulnotriquetral impaction is demonstrated in this patient with a dysplastic, fat, broad ulnar styloid. Small pseudocysts on both sides, triquetrum and ulna, are identified. The peripheral aspect of the TFCC is inflamed all around the ulno meniscus homolog. The synovitis surrounding the ulnar styloid, involving the ulnar styloid recess and extending into the fovea is apparent on the T1 weighted image as intermediate signal intensity. On the gradient echo image, degeneration and inflammation has extended into the triangulofibrocartilage itself on this three-dimensional, water-emphasized gradient echo sequence. And the pseudocysts from abutment in the triquetrum have resulted. Another example and cause of ulno triquetral impaction is seen after trauma or fracture. When the healing is dysplastic or overgrown, as is apparent on this 3D reconstructed coronal reformat sequence, demonstrating even in the neutral position, abutment of the ulnar styloid against the triquetrum, one can understand how this individual, a professional golfer, cannot ulnar deviate the wrist and therefore has lost significant yardage off of his ball. An uncommon type of impingement involves the midcarpal space, especially when the midcarpal ligaments become lax, dissolve, or are ruptured. 
This micro instability phenomenon leads to hamate extension proximally and palmarly against the lunate, producing erosions at the base of the hamate. Or the capitate can similarly migrate proximally and palmarly and also lead to erosions of it and the adjacent ulna. This patient also has an erosion along the base of the lunate from ulno-lunate abutment. So this is a combined complex instability in which the patient has both mid-carpal instabilities resulting in hamidolunate and capitolunate abutment as well as ulno-triquetral abutment. Now the fact that the ulna is not protruding distally should not dissuade you from the diagnosis for this protrusion may occur in various other wrist positions. Finally, there's an area in the mid-carpal region known as the space of Poirier. It is a weak space that allows for proximal and palmar capitate migration, especially when the ulnar limb of the V ligament of the mid-carpal space is ruptured. And this leads to a condition known as volar intercalary segmental instability and perhaps scaphalunate advanced collapse or slack wrist. But that is a story for another vignette. Well, this concludes our discussion of the uncommon impingement or abutment syndromes. The one I would really like you to focus on today is ulnotriquetral impaction. Remember, there's a normal undulation that's smooth and non-inflamed in the triquetrum. With true abutment, you'll see synovitis, pseudocysts, an abnormal overgrown ulnar styloid, evidence of an old fracture, an accessory ossicle, and other anomalies that contribute to restriction of ulnar deviation and ulnar-sided pain syndrome. Thanks, and have a great day.